All right, I am going to call tonight's meeting to order. The time is 6.03 p.m. according to my computer. Um, first item on the agenda is the agenda review. Does anyone have anything they wish to add or subtract from the agenda? Hearing none, I would like a motion to accept, approve, excuse me, approve the agenda. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? You're, abs you're opposed, Susan? Susan, were you opposed? No? Okay. You just raised your hand at the opposed word, so I just want to make sure. Okay, so the motion carries. <clears throat> um, next item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. If you could please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the, to flag, the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I was looking straight ahead at the maybe flag that's somewhere in that direction. Okay, next item on the agenda is visitors. So it appears we have quite a few visitors tonight. Um, not sure what all the topics are, but there's a few that come to mind. So um, I think what we need to do is set some ground rules for the visitor section. I think that the approach will be that everybody gets an opportunity to speak at once. Um, we're going to give you a two minute time limit to your conversation and we'll take you in order of uh, how you sign into the chat. So if you wish to speak, you need to sign into the chat and then we'll call your name and we will um, hear what you have to say. Anybody have any questions for that? All right, so <clears throat> trying to find my chat and <clears throat> okay, Susan just let us know that her college age kids are home and she doesn't have great Wi-Fi, so she's not there. She's really here. <laughs> um, so just so we know that who's going to um, tell me the names of who's signing into chat. Uh, to give any kind of visitor comment. I don't see anybody signed in yet. <clears throat> I can take care of that for you, Milda. Is, has, I don't see anyone signed in, do you? Yes, yep. I do, yeah. Yep, I'm, not, I'm not seeing the right thing then. Can you just name them off? Oh, yeah, Ryer. So Ryer, Erickson, Reese Kelly. Yeah. The two that are up there right now. Okay, let's start with the first person is Ryer. Thank you, uh, Ryer Erickson, he, him. Um, I know people are gonna hear, are here to talk about the Medicaid issue and I'm just gonna let them talk about that. I wanna discuss uh, comments made by the superintendent. Um, information he passed on indicated that only white students had been referred to police um, as it pertained to the SRO commi uh, committee, but, or SRO program, but that's not actually true. According to emails sent to the SRO committee by Lieutenant Talley, at least three um, students of color have been referred to the state's attorney, which doesn't even, of, of 51 incidents, and that doesn't include other interactions with police. So I don't know why that information was forwarded because it's false. Uh, maybe it's because uh, Dr. Durth, quote, uh, does not have an open mind on the situation, which is a pretty uh, deplorable thing for an education administrator to say that you don't have an open mind um, and aren't willing to uh, listen to all perspectives. Equity should be a goal for us all. Um, I'd also like to combat the idea that the 2019 arrest was a lone issue, which is what he stated in the interview with from uh, VT Digger. Uh, it's not. I've spoken to many parents who have uh, had similar interactions with police. Their students have as well over the years. Um, and uh, maybe if the district was willing to look at this with an open mind, instead of not having an open mind, that wouldn't be, um, be neglected, those parents wouldn't feel neglected in that aspect. Um, 
Also, he talked about some of the ways the SRO program has changed. And those ways have been um, de-escalation um, and a few others. But one thing he didn't mention, which I brought up time and time again here at every single school board meeting I attend, which is anti-bias and anti-racism training, something that not just the SROs need, but every single school district employee needs to be taking. Thank you. Thank you, Meyer. Um, our next person is Reese Kelly. Hi everyone, um, Reese Kelly, use he, him pronouns. Um, I also want to um, address uh, what Superintendent Durth has been quoted on in uh, the Vermont Digger article. Um, I was really, really shocked as someone who has held administration roles uh, in education before um, that he went on record saying that he was pro-police and pro-SRO when there is a committee um, through the board right now that's reviewing the role of SROs. I felt like um, that that's really shameful for an administrator to, um, it's fine to have that personal opinion, but I think to make that public on the record in the middle of a review, in the middle when we were seeking um, data and information from the community, um, I hope that that did not influence it in the way that I think it should not have actually been said in a public venue from an administrative position. Um, I think as someone who's a community member who continues to bring up their concerns around this topic, the fact that you went publicly about that, um, again, in the middle of an SRO committee review, um, I would like an apology for that. I think that's really disrespectful to community members who have brought concerns as well as community members who are serving in a volunteer capacity on that committee to do that work. I, I just was sh to shocked to see someone uh, in your role uh, do that. Um, I have a few questions that if there is an opportunity for the board to respond to them, I'd like to know at what point did the board become aware of the potential misuse of Medicaid funds to pay for the SRO program. I'd like to know if there will be a formal investigation of the allegations it's a quarter of a million dollars of federal funds a year that's being used allegedly illegally for this purpose. And the last question that I have is whether or not you're going to consider suspending Superintendent Durth and or the SRO program during the investigation pending the outcome of that. So that's all I have. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Uh, we have Dr. Jen Williamson. Okay. Yeah, Dr. Williamson. Hi. Um, so I was also appalled when I saw Superintendent their statements of Vermont Digger stating, I don't have an open mind on the situation. I believe in our school resource officers. I believe strongly in our SROs. Um, I guess I know we, know we now know how he'll vote regardless of the findings of the SRO committee and their free volunteer <coughs> hard work over the last course of months. Um, his mind is already made up that he will support the SROs no matter what, or at least that's what he told Vermont Digger. Um, he'll support SROs despite the Vermont State House declaring racism a public health emergency. He'll support SROs despite ACLU and Vermont Legal Aid showing that Maple Run violates laws by using Medicaid funds for SRO funding. He will support SROs despite knowing that SROs in our district have harmed students and not just the one that was in seven days. There have been numerous others. People have come forward to me and told me of their stories. I can only guess that they have gone to their administrators as well of their schools and told them of their occurrences. And it's just not being discussed. Um, he'll support SROs knowing that SROs cause adverse childhood events, which lead to long-term health repercussions and increased likelihood to commit crimes and abuse drugs later in life. He'll support SROs knowing that SROs target students who are neurodivergent or disabled, BIPOC or LGBTQIA multiple times more frequently than their mm -hmm. cis, hetero, white, abled and neurotypical counterparts. So I'm asking for Maple Run Board to ask Superintendent Durth to step down immediately. I don't think that he should be any part of the discussion that occurs when the SRO committee findings come back on June 16th, um, because he has already made his mind up and his mind has been put out into the public and we all know how he feels. And it's just not, it's not right. And I want him to step down. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Williamson. 
Do we have any other person in the queue that wishes to speak? I don't see anyone else, Nilda. Okay. <clears throat> so hearing no one else, we're gonna close the visitor section of um, our agenda. I'm going to, okay, attempt to close the chat here. No. Um, all right, um, the next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. We have two items. We have uh, the minutes from May 5th, 21, 2021, and also a document of staff changes. Um, if anybody has any items they wanna bring out for a specific discussion, please let me know. Otherwise, we will consider the consent agenda adopted. Do we have any items that need to be brought forward? I'm seeing none. Um, so <clears throat> we'll adopt the consent agenda as submitted. Item six on our agenda is old business. A is the COVID update. Dr. Durth, can you please give us the recent COVID update? You will need to unmute. I think I've learned by now. Good evening, everybody. Uh, the COVID update is relatively short. We have, we're moving in the right direction. While we have a couple cases, that, well, we had a couple cases in St. Tech earlier this week, um, as is true in Vermont and, and the nation itself, uh, cases are going down, vaccinations are going up. We have started <laughs> vaccinating our, our students now, which is, which is wonderful. I know Congress in Maine has had a, a huge amount, I've been told, of, of students having come in uh, this week. So we're going in the right direction. We brought our seventh and eighth grade uh, students back as of Monday. That uh, went quite well. So we're, we're glad to have our elementary school back to somewhat normal. Um, at the same token, we're working on uh, after school activities, or, or I should say end of year activities. And there's not too much updates on that other than the fact that we've pr pretty much got our eighth grade graduations and our high school senior events down. And uh, we're starting to publicize the information. They'll be all outside. At least we're, we're having something this year. And it's a, it's a great boon for what it was last year. And uh, kudos to the principals. And, and other administrators on this because it's it's not easy. Uh, the logistics that have to take place to make this happen um, and, and still fall within the guidelines. But they're doing it and we're, it's, it's gonna be good for, for students. And I know everybody's really excited. So thanks to all on that. And uh, that's only a few weeks away now. I, I am gonna recommend that this probably be my last COVID update in that I don't see a lot of additions. And of course, if there is, I will, we, we'll, we'll add that, but it seems like we're winding down in a pretty good place right now. Thank you. I, I do have a question. Um, is, are the, is the school system finding that it's taking a little bit longer to get results for their COVID testing when a test is necessary? I don't know, Nilda. Um, we haven't had a lot of testing done, and you, and you probably know staff. It, that's that has stopped the state testing for the staff. At, at yeah. So I I haven't heard anything. I don't know if there's any administrator doing anything about it. Heather Ann. It does seem to be taking a couple of days. It had gone down to like overnight for a while there, and now it's back to a couple of days. It seems. Yeah. That's, that's the case that I've heard about. Um, I heard about an incident in the Swanton school system where it took like five days for someone's result to come back, which keeps that person out of school until they get a negative test, obviously. And um, they ended up having to go get a second test at a different location because they couldn't locate the first test. I'm sure it's a one-off, but it just made me think that 
because everything is changing and everybody's operationalizing COVID testing, like business as usual, that it's going to be like getting your blood count done, you know, or your, you know, urine test done. It's just going to come back in due time. So it's kind of interesting. I just hope it doesn't cause any issues because of that timeliness issue. Anyway, that's my two cents. Um, anyone else have any questions related to COVID? Joanna? Um, I, I have a question. I guess it's more of a clarification. Um, Bill, when you uh, gave us uh, like your recovery report um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I, I had asked a question about the SEL information that you shared. And I just, I can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> and I just want to make sure I heard you correctly. I, I feel like I heard you say that throughout the three schools, well, four schools, excuse me, um, that there was not an increase in SEL issues um, with students, that it was this, you know, those people who were having, you know, social emotional issues prior to COVID, um, you know, maintain still having issues, but there wasn't an increase. And um, I, I guess I'm, I'm really questioning that because in my supervisory union, we're at 30% increase. And as I speak to other friends who are teachers and other supervisory unions across the state, they are also anywhere between a 15 and 30% increase um, in, in issues. And so I guess I'd like to hear from the, from the um, individual principals um, whether or not they've seen social emotional increase, an increase in social emotional issues among students. Joanna, jo jo I first want to just clarify, um, for, as I did that same night, we're not seeing an increase in the number of students. We're seeing an increase in the intensity of the, of the issues that happen with those students. Do you understand the difference? I, I, I do. Okay. Maybe I need to ask one more clarifying question. Are you saying that you're not seeing an increase in different students, so new students who are experiencing um, social emotional issues as a result of COVID? That's what I'm saying. Okay. And I would, I'm surprised to hear that. And we and were I, too. And we were too. And I mean, are you an anomaly um, in terms of those numbers? I can't, I can't give you causality. I, I can't. I don't know what's driving okay. it. No, well, I, Kevin goes to a meeting where there's like 16 other superintendents. So Kevin, were you an anomaly when you go to those meetings? Are you not hearing that from other schools? We haven't talked about that issue. So I can't, I can't mention that. What I can say is that the data- You haven't that, talked about social emotional issues as a group of superintendents in a year and a half of a pandemic? Not at that level, Joanna. I'm sorry if you don't like that answer, but that's what that's what's happening. Okay, I guess I'd like to see um, the results of the um, the surveys that were done at the schools. I'm just having a really hard time um, understanding that because it's just not it's not what has been experienced anywhere in the state. I mean, our our governor got on the news and talked about the amount of social emotional issues our young people are experiencing. Um, I would agree with you, an intense, an increase in intensity, but an increase in numbers as well. Can I hear from the principals, please? Me? Sorry. Maybe we could um, put this on an agenda for a future meeting so that our um, administrators can be prepared to talk about it instead of kind of talking about it off the top of their head. Would that work for you, Joanna? If anybody, I'm happy to go into more detail, but I, I think that the teachers, uh, the principals know whether or not there's been an increase right. of and, and I student heard, needs. I, I heard what you asked and I actually heard the, the same uh, commentary on the news, but I mean, we, we already have some pretty intense situations in our, in our districts, unfortunately. So maybe the Delta is not as much because we were already at a critical situation. That's just me 
postulating. I have no evidence of that, but except for anecdotal one, we've heard that we're, you know, having a lot of issues, but I'd like to request that we, you know, talk about it at another meeting, because I just hate to put people on the spot, maybe not quite prepared to give any kind of stats like that. Otherwise, it's anecdotal. It's just like me giving it like I just did, you know, Susan. Then if we're going to do that, can we do that for the next meeting? Um, we certainly can uh, try to do that for the next meeting. Um, let me, uh, let, let's see if we can make that happen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, where am I? Um, next item on the agenda is the St. Albans City School boilers use of capital funds. So um, I would like a motion to authorize the use of capital funds to cover the cost of the St. Albans City School boiler approved at the last meeting. Can I have a motion for discussion, please? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? A second. Now you guys remember how to make motions. Al's not here. We need to have a refresher. We might have to do that. Um, thank you. Okay, discussion. Um, who has the information on this? Is this a... I'll talk to it, Nilda. Last time we forgot, and I have to apologize, last time we didn't have the motions written for this uh, in the last meeting, and we didn't have the tag phrase for it to be taken from the capital budget that was the plan and we actually discussed it it just was not in the motion and i Mar i'll let martha speak for herself but from my conversations with her we need this officially approved by the board since you're the one that approved since the board is has control of the use of the capital funds yeah yeah we've done this in the past so um certainly any other discussion related to this this is just basically housekeeping what we've already approved okay um Seeing no one else, I'm going to call a vote. All in favor of the motion to authorize the use of capital funds to cover the cost of the St. Albans City School boiler approved at the last meeting signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Any abstention? Motion carries 9-0. All right, we're up to item seven, new business. Um, so we have non-union wage increase on our agenda. This topic covers all the positions that are in our, super, our um, district that are not covered by either the professional contract or the paraprofessional contract. So um, we have the option of looking for a finding and discussing this in executive session as we've done in the past. Um, so what is the pleasure of the board? I think uh, Bill's going to talk us through this. Bill, do you, do you see any reason that we would be put at an unfair advantage if we talk about this openly now? Uh, if you wanted to change what the recommendation was for the percentage, um, I, I will tell you that it would be in alignment with the other two contracts you approved. Right, right. Um, I mean, I think um, if we follow our usual process, we would go into an executive session to get the, the dollar amounts, and then we'd come out and vote on it. So perhaps we had to stick to what we usually do. So um, I guess I need a finding. And uh, Brenda, if you can put the VSA numbers in the, in the minutes for me that I don't have in front of me, but basically we want to make sure that um, we're talking, since we're talking about contractual issues, we have the ability to discuss this prime, preliminarily in executive session. So we need a finding that says that. And we're going to make that finding happen. And Brenda, do you have, should we read those, um, the VSA into the minutes or will you um, just tell it to me so that um, for the record we have it? I just want to be on the up and up here. <clears throat> and I was going to look it up earlier and I got distracted and didn't get a chance to. No, Nilda, I'm happy to make that motion. I just don't know the magic words off the top of my head. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Brenda's looking them up right now, I okay. think. 
I'll second I, it too if you need to. <laughs> yeah. All right. I just I just yeah, want the magic words are after making a specific finding that premature general public knowledge could clearly place the public body involved at a substantial disadvantage. And that's going to be VSA 313 A uh, B. A one B. Thank you. Can you Labor make, relations agreement for employees. Can I have a laminated copy of that, please? Um, <laughs> all right. So we have a motion and a second um, stating that we have a finding and we're going to handle this in executive session. So I'm going to move on to new business part B. Um, it's the panorama purchase for a student data warehouse. We need we need to get a motion on the record for discussion. So we need a motion to award a three-year contract for student data warehousing to Panorama in the amount of $92,142 for discussion, please. Motion, please. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Okay, we're in discussion. So I think Bill and perhaps Martin are going to take us through this. Bill? Sorry, I'm muted. Uh, yes, that's correct. Um, I was um, I was just checking to see if Martin's here. I, I thought I saw him, but I maybe thought I saw him on the list. There he is. Good, he is there. Um, I, we want that Martin's led a, a committee of teachers and administrators through a process starting back in December or so. I, I was hoping he could talk about the process and uh, to replace. A uh, piece of software called Alpine that we use for student data warehousing. So, Martin, maybe you can give us a summary of the process and who was involved and how we got to where we're at. Uh, yes, that's correct. Um, Alpine, our past data warehouse, uh, was closing shop and we had no choice but to um, look for other options. And so, what we did is um, we put together a collection of stakeholders. Um, comprising the spectrum of the district. Um, so we had teachers, teacher leaders, we had uh, principals, data specialists, um, uh, our assistant superintendent and myself. Mm. Uh, so we had a group of about 13 individuals uh, who I would like to thank for all of the hours that you put into this. Um, and so we looked through the different options, did the research, um, and we landed on a data warehouse that allows us to fully triangulate uh, state assessments, local assessments, and uh, grade book standard proficiencies, uh, and is also able to be fully integrated into our school information system, um, able to pull in attendance data, behavior data, um, even has the capacity for integrating SEL, social emotional learning uh, information, all in one place. Um, in fact, the social emotional learning piece even comes with a research-based survey tool um, that would allow us to get all that information. But also once the information is in, it is able to look at the data and provide uh, different angles of um, interve intervention or um, trying to improve um, where maybe there's weaknesses in SEL. Um, but it also allows us to perform surveys um, related to school climate, school culture, and other such surveys that could be um, pivotal in helping us uh, not just with the recovery plan, but um, in general. Um, and so we landed on Panorama, which we found the, uh, among the options to have a unique capacity to integrate a large spectrum of the data uh, related to fostering student success. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? You got a handout um, of those comparisons in your packet. Questions? Mar have, Mar Martin, where are you right now? What country are you in? I'm at home in Milton, Vermont. Oh, so you are in the, back in, in the United States. I wasn't sure. I knew at one point you weren't here and I never kind of heard that you arrived. So that's great. Thank you. Yep. Yes, yeah, so I was able to make my way back through adventurous means. I bet. Um, 
Nina, did you have a question? Yeah, I did. Martin, I just had a quick, a couple quick questions, maybe just one. Uh, what's the amount of effort to migrate the existing data into the new uh, Panorama data warehouse? Are we going to lose anything, or do they think it's pretty easy to to transfer the data over? Yeah, so we're able to extract all the data that we had in Alpine, and that's already in the works. And um, we'll now start implementing this uh, new system, um, working with different stakeholders to um, see how we want to craft the new data aggregation, rather than just assume that we want want it the way it was before. And this is going to be rolled out to all the all the schools, correct? Yes, across the district. So you actually am able to compare schools, the different intervention interventions across schools, which is working, which is not, allows to collaborate and um, borrow tactics from each other in terms of uh, making sure kids succeed. Are you getting any vendor support or is that part of the new contract and they're, they're consulting, I guess, part of the contract? Yes, it is. It includes training and implementation support. How long does that go for? Uh, maybe six weeks. Okay. And then the maintenance, what's the maintenance cost after that? Uh, the cost is the same year by year. There's it no is. difference. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. So Nina, what do you do for work? No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for all those questions. Anyone else have any questions? Susan. So um, it's $30,000 a year. Yes. 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 Plus. Okay. Yeah. And then um, I know you, I should never assume anything. So I have to assume that it's got top notch security in terms of protecting student data. Yes. Thank you. Good question, Susan. <laughs> Anyone Appreciate else? That. Any other questions before we take a vote? Sorry if I missed it. Um, did did we say that the amount is what was budgeted? So um, I'll I'll take that one, Martin. Um, we have a, we had approximately about in, somewhere in the neighborhood, and Martin can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Eighteen to twenty thousand dollars for Alpine. It is more. Um, but it is giving us much more enhancement over the Alpine system, especially the surveyability that Alpine didn't have, and it's something we need to move into um, to enhance our data, as we were talking about earlier during the COVID section. It's just going to help us have a better data system for SEL, and it's one that uh, Alexis Hoyt has been researching and trying to find us better systems to enhance. We're going to use grant funds for this first year. Uh, Martin's looking at he and I have already talked about this is going to fit in the overall software budget for the district. So he's working on that. But we can support him for a year or two with the federal uh, recovery monies. Okay. So it sounds like it's sort of a value for money proposition, but in addition, there may be savings elsewhere to offset. Well, that's that's our challenge. As the and that's what we're asking Martin to do. That's what I'm asking him to do. You got that, you got that from me a couple of weeks ago. Okay. Got to figure it out. Are those savings directly enabled by the additional capability? I maybe that's a question for Martin. So. I don't think okay. so. It'll be the choice as it always is. Sometimes, of what do we go without? Sometimes, yeah, or, what, or do we want to enhance the software budget from somewhere else and make a run? And we just don't know those answers. Those questions, answers to those questions yet until we get down that road and so to be able to support them with grant funds for a year or two to. Get us there because this is the time to do the, the the research and make the best decisions to go forward. Thanks. Will we be able to see just like a, a just a, a peek at this um, maybe end of summer to see what it looks like or what's the timeline to to get this implemented? I think it will. We have a lot of work to do with teachers mm -hmm. um, through the fall, Nina. So. Okay. Um, and I do not know if it has the ability for the board to see it because it would be a public piece and we need to protect the student privacy. Okay. All right. Uh, I was we just should be giving, we, we as, a, uh, as an administrative team should be giving you data reports. So okay. That's, I'm not saying no to the data. What I'm saying is it may not be through that tool. Yeah, I'm not saying specific data, maybe just like to some features, you know, of what it does and maybe some ooh and ahs and, you know, the survey thing and how, what, how we're going to, you know, use that and uh, to a, you know, uh, 
positive, um, I guess that was a feature you did that, that's come up a couple of times. So yeah, if we, I mean, if we could just see maybe a, a quick demo or a quick PowerPoint, maybe early this fall, that would be great to see what, you know, where, where you, what's been done up to point, what needs to be left and it'd just be, be good to show, show and tell. Maybe the company has some swag they can <laughs> get a pass. Yeah. That we know they have. <laughs> Can't be more than worth more than 25 cents, but yeah. Um, we can give yeah, you the swag. If possible. That's just a, like the features and stuff, but thank you. Appreciate it, Maren. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. We've had discussion. Any more discussion questions related to the Panorama product? Can I just add a quick comment that I think is sure. worth sharing? Is that appropriate or can I not do that? Um, related to the Panorama? Yes. Yeah, sure. I just wanted to add a piece that it, it's also going to help measure the effectiveness of our multi-tiered systems of support um, from both an inclusion and um, equity standpoint as well. So it'll it'll tie in MTSS um, and how we're doing um, in that area as well. So they, they have a whole section dedicated um, to inclusionary practices and, and um, evaluating us on that end as well. Oh, that's good. Well, we look forward to seeing data from this product. Um, all in favor, are we ready to vote? All in favor of the motion to award the three-year contract to Panorama for $92,140 signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries 9-0. All right. All right, here next item is the BFA tractor purchase. So I'm gonna really screw up one of these words, but um, we, I'd like a motion for discussion to award the tractor bid to Essex Equipment for the purchase of a Kubota tractor with attachments per bid documents in the amount of $30,654.96. And I believe Bill and Brett are prepared to discuss the Kabuda tractor with us. So moved. <laughs> there is that get. Sorry, Kate. Thank you. See, you guys, you're off your game because Al's not here. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, Bill. And Delta, I can't believe I'm the one that's going to do this because I'm the one who always pronounces everything wrong, but it's Kabuda <laughs> by those of us that own one. Um, <laughs> The, the BFA track, their current tractor they have up, up at there that uh, they use for snow removal, loading. They don't have a loading dock, so they have to use it as a loading, unloading uh, large trucks that, you know, when a semi comes back uh, to get things off of it, moving around topsoil and mulch and, and other things for the landscaping and, and other debris pickups. The big thing it does is snow removal. The one they have currently is just rusting apart. Um, it's about 20, we think it's like 20 years old, it's somewhere in the range of 18 to 21 years, as I said in the memo in the packet. Um, and Len Smith, our tremendous facilities director, went out and, and got some bids for a tractor. Um, they, and uh, it's used, I know when I was up there last year, I saw anytime there's any chance of snow, that thing was out doing work around the, I know it's used other times of year too, so. Uh, Brett, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, is Brett here? He hey, is Brett. here. He's on he, mute. He, you need to unmute. Well, he is unmuted. He is unmuted. Oh, is he? Huh. Yeah. Can you do sign language, Brett? <laughs> Let me uh, try it again. I don't know. There he is. There you go. There. <laughs> yeah, I won't get into a computer issue. Um, yeah, I would just echo what Bill said. I saw it used extensively this year, but we had a fair amount of snow on a steady basis. And I think people might be surprised at the delivery weight of items that Bill was mentioning. So, I mean, there it's something's pretty massive and heavy, and I don't know how you do it without a tractor. Well, I guess I could use students, but that might be an issue. <laughs> All right, any other um, questions or comments for 
Bill or Brett related to Pabuda. What's what's the current what's the year of the current tractor? <laughs> Just curious. Well, that that's the that's <laughs> that's the twenty four thousand dollar question, Nina. We wish we had the exact. We know it's between about eighteen and twenty one years old by the the way it's configured. Okay. Uh, but we don't have the exact. Okay. Yeah, and just to let you, I mean, if we're going with Essex equipment, it just it's minor, but the quote is two dollars. Um, it's two dollars uh, less than what's in the in minutes. So that just needs to be updated. That's all. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> minor. <laughs> Unless I'm reading that wrong. Thank you for that, <laughs> Brenda. Be all over it. Um, any other discussion? Kind of same Wait. question as last time. Um, mm -hmm. I assume this one is not budgeted. Is it, where's it coming from? Is this capital? No, it's not. It's coming from within the local budget. Okay. We're able to do it within the Maple Run budget. That's a good question, Grant, for how I took care of the last meeting's issue. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Okay, hearing none, we're gonna take a vote. All in favor of the motion as uh, listed I think I read it twice. Um, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Any abstentions? Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is board retreat scheduling. So there's a couple of different ones of us that are gonna speak about this. So I, I had a conversation with Bill and we looked at um, some dates. And since we have all our meetings scheduled throughout the summer with two meetings a month, we were looking at scheduling a board retreat. And in my head, I wanna go after July 4th because that's when the governor told me the world would be um, a better place. So we have July 7th, July 21st or August 4th as dates that we're looking at. Um, the other thing, and I'm gonna let you jump in, Bill, when I run out of steam here, but um, Bill has um, offered, uh, to contact a, a consultant named Mike Dewees. And some of you will remember him. Nina, I think you should remember him. He was the guy that facilitated the unification, the Maple Run unification discussions. Yes, yep. Yeah. Um, and I think some of the principals may remember him. Um, but anyway, and Jack, you probably just know him from being around. Um, anyway, he... Uh, I, even though I was um, not on the same side as he was on when we were having the discussions about unification, he was definitely a good uh, facilitator. And we can um, book this meeting as a training session. So when, you're, when the board is at training sessions, um, we don't have to have a public meeting. And he is um, a skilled facilitator, former superintendent, and is a consultant. So um, we had to look at those dates and we really should pick one of those dates tonight. I'm not gonna ask you to pick it this minute, but kind of cogitate on it because we have to secure um, the instructor and we have to figure out where we're gonna go. And then- um, Nilda, what were the options again? The 7th, the 21st and the 4th? July 7th, July 21st, August 4th. I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna go through and ask your, you guys to prioritize. I'm gonna do the Nilda doodle instead of the Google doodle or whatever it's called and just do a quick- Oh, the new one? What's that? No, I was just gonna, I'm just gonna do a, uh, I'm gonna ask you, but I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes to think about it. Um, and then, uh, well, that's the board retreat thing. The other thing I, is going to come up in board announcements, but it kind of fits right here. Um, Bill and I talked about, he has a, a tool that is called, I don't know, Brainiac or something, brain something, brainstorming tool. It's called Thought Exchange. Thought Exchange, thank you. Thought Exchange. Um, and he um, offered to run that tool with us on our June 1st meeting. And uh, what I understand it does is it sort of is an electronic process that does the brainstorming technique, right? Where you come up with priorities, what are your priorities? And we all list our priorities and then it goes through a ranking type process and then basically gives you, you know, three, four, five, whatever items are that are your priorities. And that's how we can sort of focus our, um, 
retreat around what we consider priorities or goals of the board. And it's uh, it, it, it's kind of an unbiased process, you know, because everybody gets to state their stuff. And Bill, I'm, I'm like stealing your thunder here, but that I thought it was cool the way he explained it to me. And I thought we could um, use it at our meeting and, and get results like that night, right? I think yep. that's what you said. Yeah, no, so, we've used it with two committees. We've had the tool for about two or three weeks. Other supervisory unions have been using it. Um, we're starting to use it with groups about the size of the board or greater. We've done it both with the two groups we used. It does, people get their brainstorm and you don't know who, whose idea is which, and then you rank them yourself. And then it takes everyone's ratings and you find where the center is, which is great. You know, what they are the things people collaboratively together say are the most important, but you don't know whose idea it is, um, which is, it's a really nice way of, uh, a safe way of saying, no, I like that. And I'm not so interested in that, so. Right. It's really important that you don't give everything five stars all the time. Otherwise, you don't know which ones are the top. Right, right. But you've all done that brainstorming process where you get the little sticker and you have to go up and dot the flip chart. This is like electronic process for this. So um, I thought it was a great idea when Bill brought it up. I thought we could implement that at our June 1st meeting. We can have some topics and then we can sort of refine those topics based on our discussion after we do the um the, what do you, what do you call it again it's a thought exchange thought exchange and then we'll see the analysis of the frequency and the importance for folks and then okay. we'll be able to say what are the things what are the few things you can't do everything at a retreat you and i talked about building right, right. So these are the top what we'd like to do and then we i haven't had a chance to talk to mike deweese yet so i'm sorry no that i haven't gotten to that yet but i'm hopeful yeah. um and uh you know, if, if he can't, we'll find someone else to help us talk through those okay. topics and okay. what and some of the training that happened through we saw in the superintendent chair training that you and I have been in. So yeah, so I'm counting on him, so he better say yes. <laughs> I'll um, tell him that. <laughs> yeah, and you can tell him my name because he and I had a few conversations, as we shall we shall call them. <laughs> um, Thought exchange is not a very catchy name, though. I like Brainiac better, but I'm sure it's trade named and trademarked already. So, um, all right, then. Um, so is anybody prepared to tell me what dates they like for the retreat? Alicia. I knew you were going to call on me. Um, my preference in order is chronological. My preference would be July 7th, 1st, July 21st, 2nd, and August 4th, or August 4th as my third choice. Okay, Susan. I'd be the same. The I'd be um, want the ones in July. Quite honestly, my mom's birthday is August fourth, and I'm hoping that I'm going to be spending it with her. Okay, Nina. Um, July seventh and August fourth. July twenty first is out for me. Okay, Joanna. Sorry, um, I would say the 7th and the 21st, the 4th is out for me. Okay, uh, Grant. Um, I definitely can't do the 7th. Uh, the 21st depends on the production schedule at work. The only day I know I'm available is the 4th. Okay, Peter. Before I sub, uh, say anything, I need to know like how much time, what time of day, I need to know more about it. I know nothing about it and I don't know how much I'm committing when I commit. Um, it's a you know three day workshop. No, <laughs> it's probably at one evening, six to nine-ish meal provided. Well, you just, you had me at meal provided. Um, yeah, I, I guess I would just pick off that. I would say, I'll go with Grant and say August 4th. Okay, Katie? I can do any of the three. Doesn't matter. Okay. Just one second. We're almost done. Jack? I can't do the seventh. I'll be away, but I can do the other two. Okay, well, this is working out just like magic here. Um, okay, well, we'll analyze the data, as they say, and... Uh, come up with a report here real quick. Um, and I wrote those down, but I hope someone else did too. Um, all right. 
So we're going to move on to other business. We have the warrants. And um, I need someone to make the owl motion related to the warrants, please. And we'll fill in the language that indicates that saying yes to this means that you've reviewed all this stuff and blah, blah, blah. And I hate to blah, 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 but. I'm moved. I'm doing it. I'll just say uh, administration seeks a motion to approve the warrants acknowledged, acknowledging that passage of this motion will act as an individual board member authorization of their signature on these warrants. Thank you so much for being complete. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, Jack. Any discussion on the warrants? No, I've just got one question. I, I asked it actually before the meeting. And I'd need to know how the rest of the board feels about it. It would be tremendously helpful for me as I go through the warrant if they could put them in order of most to least, because I may care where we spend two grand, but I hardly care at all where we spend twenty dollars. And I, I I don't know if that's a push of the button, but if it's a lot of work, then obviously I can live without it. But if it's an easy push of a button, then I would like to see the warrant presented that way, if that's the flavor of the rest of the board. Um. That's, that's not a bad idea, but I don't know what Martha's capabilities are. Um, I'm sure that we can ask her to take that under consideration when she produces the next warrants, but I think they're kind of stacked by time frames. So, but maybe you could do it within the time blocks. I'll, I'll look and see what the software will uh, give us the capability to do. Thank you, Thank you very much. much. Appreciate that. Okay, are we ready to take a vote on the warrants? All in favor of, of approving the motion made by Nina and seconded by, uh, was it Jack? Uh, signified yes. by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? No abstentions. Okay, next item on the agenda is superintendent report. Dr. Durth, do you have anything to add to your previous report? Nothing additional, Milda. Nothing additional. Okay. Uh, next item is board announcements. So I already mentioned that the June 1st pre, uh, brainstorming session. So uh, the other thing I want you all to know is the SRO report from the SRO, hang on just a sec. SRO study committee will be set, um, addressed at our June 15th meeting. Um, I've talked to Emma, the facilitator, asked her to get the packet, I want, I told her we want a hard copy of the report and she's going to get it to Brenda by 1 p.m. the Friday before that meeting. So it'll go out with our regular packet, which we usually get sent out and get sent out to us um, that day. Um, I'm sure that when you read it, you will have questions. I'm asking you all to just write your questions down and stuff. And and keep them available so that when the co-chairs come and present, we'll have an opportunity to ask questions. I would prefer that no one contact anyone on the committee and ask it, you know, random questions because that's really not the way we want to do business. Um, and any other questions related to that SRO thing? Nelda, yeah? not related to the SRO, but are we doing the meeting on the 15th or is it the 16th? I may, I may have misspoke. It's Wednesday. It is the 16th. Okay. I was just. It's Wednesday. Okay. Perfect. Wednesday. Thank you. And, um, sorry, Nilda, can I, I think we spoke about it last time, but again, just setting expectations that, you know, the report will be um, presented that night. I, how, how is that going to go? As, or is that be presented at the next meeting? It's going to be presented at that meeting. It's going to be presented by the two co-chairs. Okay. Um, I've asked them to send us that, as I said, a paper copy, yep. you know, electronic copy, but you know, a tangible copy the Friday before. Um, I've asked that any recommendation has a justification or rationale associated with it. So we understand what their thought processes are. And I was very clear with them that once they give us the report, their job is over and that, that the board has to digest the report and the board, um, just for the record, the board, not the superintendent or any other administrators making the decision. It's the board decision as to how we move forward. And we may, we may need to take more than you know that night to talk about it. I, I certainly hope we do, um, because we don't. We, you know, six months worth of studying doesn't mean six minutes worth of you know analysis. So, 
Um, so that's how I understand it. Well, the board have, oh, I'm sorry. No, they go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say, will the board um, have the opportunity to ask questions of the committee or just kind of hear the report and then kind of digest it again. I know you know they've done research, so maybe some of the some of them have come experts on some of those yeah. you know topics. Possibly, I was just curious. I if, think we're I think be... we're going to have the chairs present. Okay. I, okay. Don't, I don't even know if Emma's going to be there. Oh I yeah, think, okay. Um, Whoever's going to be represented. But um, like I said, you're going to get it in advance, so read through it and, and okay. jot down your questions in the margins or wherever. Gotcha. And as, as items come up, you you know your question might be answered in the in the exactly. presentation. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so um, we can go that. I have way. another okay. Susan. I have another question. Um, yeah. Will the, the the packet that they send us will also have links to any of the research data that they cite in the report? So there's a they have a website or a not a website okay. but a, a site on the BFA yeah. BFA really on that Maple Run site that okay. everything is on including okay. the the individual letters and and position papers that people wrote so um, we can uh, I don't know if everybody has a link to that but perhaps Brenda you can just refresh everyone's memory and send out the link to that site the SRO site on the on the Google site. Google Drive, thank you, so that everybody has it in their fresh email, so they don't have to go digging through it. We're almost done. Um, and I think so, it's right on, I think it's on the BFA site, fairly easily accessible. Yeah, if you've been there, you can find it. If you haven't been there, it sometimes takes a little while to find it. Um, so we're on the board announcement section. Does anyone have any other board announcement? I'm sorry. I just got dive bombed by three hummingbirds. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> it was kind of scary. That's I think what I was Joanna, talking about I earlier. Think Joanna has a question. Yeah. yeah um, no, just wanted to share. Kid. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, you can you can mute. Don't worry about it. Um, I just wanted to share. Um, I received a uh, free training, and um, Outright Vermont is doing a three uh, part series um, for anybody and it's free and it's wonderful. Uh, Mara Iverson is um, typically the person who does the trainings and one of the three is implicit bias. So, um, and yes, it's done by Outright Vermont but implicit bias is not, you know, just for LBGTQ. Um, it's implicit biases for, you know, all all people, all, all uh, populations, all genders. So um, I would highly recommend it. You can do it from the comfort of your home. Uh, it's probably about a two hour training. And again, it's free. So I would encourage um, anybody to uh, get on it. I think you have to go. I asked uh, Brenda to send it to all the board members. I, I know that like, I think Fairfield's already done it. For all I know, BFA's already done it. You know, I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, but if board members were interested uh, or people want, you know, wanted to share it with others, uh, really great training. Brenda shared it earlier today. Awesome. Any other board announcements? Um, more like a question. I know Ke this is for Kevin, I don't know. You mentioned graduation. Do you have the dates handy to share with everybody? By any chance or, or uh, Bill? Saturday, is, is it always is Saturday uh, at 11 o'clock, September, I mean, uh, <laughs> June 12th. I think it's the 12th. Well, for all the schools, I mean, sorry. And the elementary schools are on the 9th, Wednesday the 9th, with rain days for all of them on the 10th, Thursday the 10th. Great. Thank you. I, I should also say with BF, with B of A, there's a rain day of Sunday the 13th. Okay. And we'll have that on our June 1st agenda to oh, okay. iron out who's going where whatever needs to happen. Um, any other announcements? All right, so hearing none, we have our agenda items for future meetings. We have a bucket load of stuff here, implicit bias, training, recovery, update, five-year plan, IT study, graduation, well, we know that, in-person meetings, whenever that's gonna happen. And then um, some point in the future, we're gonna have some of that um, I'm going to try to do it for next meeting. We'll see what happens with availability of data um, related to at-risk kids. Um, and now we need to go back to our item for executive session. 
So I need a motion to go into executive session to discuss non-union wage increases. And I need um, the board, Kevin and Bill and Martha, I believe. That is that correct? That's what I was going to, I was going to ask for Martha to be there as well. Okay. Thank you all um, for coming. We'll, when we get out, come out of executive session, we'll vote on that one well, issue. Non well, then you need the motion, right? Yeah. yeah so I need <laughs> Thank you. Second. You always remind me of that. Good. You're good at that. Uh, any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you all. Thank you. Okay. So uh, on the topic of non-union union wage increase, um, can I have a motion to approve the administration uh, recommendation of a 3% increase? So moved. Oh, I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor of this motion signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, any any nays, any abstentions? Okay, motion carries 8-0. Um, is there any other business to come before the board? Yes, Peter. You're muted, Pete. Peter, you're muted. Whoa. <laughs> Dr. Durth, I thought you did a great job holding your tongue during a session of misinformation. Very well done. Yeah. So, um, Oh, I have so much to say. I better shut my mouth. Um, anybody else have <laughs> any business that needs to come before the board? I just want to second what my dad said, Dr. Durth. I don't know how you did it. You did a great job. I think kudos to you. That's how you become superintendent. You'd be yep. thick skinned and be able to take it in the teeth, right? All right. Um, hearing no other business, I'm going to adjourn this meeting. Have a good evening, everybody. Thank you. Bye. 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 Very well.